Hey everybody, we're going to look at some nuances with using the studio horns and the strings inside Logic. These are the default instruments. I've really moved away from using them and switched over to the East-West Hollywood brass, which I love very much. But there are some times that it's just easier to grab these and use them. But there's a couple of things that we should talk about. First and foremost, if you're grabbing from the library the studio horn section, and this could be like the seven piece section, one of the two presets for that, it's going to do something which I find incredibly annoying, although I kind of understand why, is putting all of this inside of a stack. And um, here's the actual instrument in the first one, and then it has the rest expanded out into different tracks. Now all of the effects come at the initial stack. And so uh, that's this is the reason why it is like this. So that they can put all of these uh, effects onto a single spot and it affects the entire section. This isn't the way I would do it. Primarily for one major reason, which is if we want to freeze these tracks, there's no option for freezing uh, this set of tracks. And so it makes more sense in some ways, if we're going to be programming, the, programming them all separately, to just add uh, the individual tracks. Now, is that the most resource efficient? Not exactly. I don't think it's horrible at the same time. Uh, so I think that we could get away with this where we put for instance, the trumpets on one track, which then you can see we can freeze. Uh, the other thing that would be temptation, new software instrument track here, is to load up the multi-output. And then you see right away that we lose the freeze as well. So the only way to freeze the tracks is if we do them as in individual instruments. Um, because the, the stack is essentially using the multi-output instrument anyway. Uh, it's just we no longer have the, the cool ability to freeze it. Makes it a little bit more of a pain. Um, so if you want to be able to freeze it, then don't do it with a default or with the multi-outputs. Um, I do think that there is some value in doing it like this uh, because you can put all the effects on one thing um, but let's look a little deeper at why sometimes the logic system here is actually kind of uh, useful in using this instrument with it all, all the things integrated into it, such as the articulation IDs. So we have the ability to still trigger each individual instrument here. They're all triggering off of the same top instrument. And we can change the articulation here for that. But we can also come through, say we have uh, the trombone one here. And I want to actually uh, just play a part real quick. Right, so just a real simple part. I'm going to open up the piano roll here for a moment. Now, the instrument as we loaded it from the library didn't come with the articulation items activated. So we're going to do that real quick. So I'm going to come here to our inspector, turn on articulation set for trombone one. Then when I go back into here, I can actually choose an articulation like sustain. Let's do the expressive long, and then we'll do three staccato notes at the bottom there. And the staccato really are kind of loud, so now we can come through and see. We'll do some softer staccatos. And now it sounds a lot more like a, an actual um, 
trombone player in many ways. But here's the cool thing. Even though we're all triggering off the same instrument, if I wanted to do an alto sax with this, um, let's do a little recording with this. Okay, didn't make a lot of sense there, but we're good. Um, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. This is the alto sax one. And now I can come through and let's see, we're gonna do the first three notes here as passionate. We'll do a fall on this one. And then three different notes here, of course, we just need to do the growls, obviously. And those were not growly. Let's do the trills. Cool. So you really quickly can see that we can have one horn section instrument and each of these different sub instruments can have full articulation sets all happening simultaneously. Now, this is one of the reasons why um, the minute we get into this, Now, we don't, I mean, I'm using one instrument with a buffer size of 256. Uh, some of this is added on because I am doing screen recording simultaneously. Um, let's just get off of this track for one second. The live input does increase a little bit. So now um, when I take off the live input, let's mute the drums. Though. Still, this relatively not young anymore Mac Mini I use to record my videos uh, definitely is working hard with this whole brass section. And then to be able to have to tell it that you can't freeze it, that's the problem I have. And so using individual instruments, even though we have such great capabilities here in terms of one instrument, and all of them can go through the same set of effects. And when we want to do things in here with the horns, we could, you know, humanize and do vibrato and attacks and key clicks, all of that stuff, um, we can do it in a unified way. I think nine times out of 10 for me, it still makes sense to do these as individual instruments. And so let's just take this through real quick um, cause I know we're about to hit our 10 minute mark. So I'm going to just do, let's just do two of these to replicate what we have. Instrument wise, we're going to do studio horn studio or stereo on both of these. The first one we're going to do as, let's see, the first one we want to do is the sax, alto sax one. And the second one we're going to do is the trombone one. And the reason why I'm doing this now is so you can uh, see what the difference is in processing requirements. Now with these, I am going to just make sure that I can see them still. We're going to do the alto sax articulation set for that one and the trombone set for this one. Okay, approximately the same sound except without all the effects of the original Sugar Hill track. So we could re, you know, recreate that if we wanted to. Um, but check out, first of all, the processing difference. And that's partly because we don't have all those other instruments currently activated. Uh, but then 
I could delete that, delete the drums. Let's see, and then let's just pull the project session down. I'm gonna freeze both of these. And now, Now it's like you can barely even see anything on the CPU. So this is why sometimes it makes more sense to do them all individually instead of either using the library default or the multi outputs, even though you think, oh, this is gonna be great. I can use one instrument instead of a bunch of different ones and it'll save me some power. Well, check it out. It, in some circumstances, won't save you a single bit of power to do it that way or ease because I'm still gonna be sequencing in each of the individual tracks. So that's something to think about. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this look at using the horn section in a couple different ways and this is useful. More videos coming next week. We're gonna actually look at the uh, competition entries we did a couple weeks ago. We've been a little slow at getting that ready but it's uh, almost ready now. We're gonna start posting them next week so everyone can vote on them. So stay tuned and more to come.